In this lecture, we are going to talk about the logistic regression. In our previous lectures, we talked about the linear model, which get input as an x, and then we do some linear operations and produce y. In our case examples, we both use the real numbers as an x, also predict real value, real numbers. However, in our life, the binary prediction, which is 0 or 1, can be very useful. For example, let's say you spend n hours for study. Are you going to pass or fail, which is binary? Also, suppose that you want to apply our University HKUST PhD program. You have a certain number of GPA and GRE scores. Are you going to get admit or not? Or we uh, have a soccer game against Japan. Are you going to win or lose? And then C, C or he looks pretty good. So do you want to propose or not? In, it, in these cases, we just need binary prediction. Either you want to do it or not doing it, 0 or 1. And then how are we going to turn our model to predict the 0 and 1 instead of real numbers? One simple solution is that just we plug in the sigmoid from the output of the linear. And what is the sigmoid? The sigmoid looks like this, and then the graph of the sigmoid looks like that. As you can probably see, the basic idea of the sigmoid is that squash numbers between 0 to 1. So which means that, let's say, we get the value output from linear as an f. f is input of the sigmoid. Then this value here is going to be f. And then for given f, we produce y hat here. This is y hat. So if f value is getting really big, then the y hat is getting too close to 1. If the f value is getting really smaller, then y hat value is close to 0. So that means that always this y hat value will be between 0 to 1. So we squash the numbers, big numbers, small numbers, to between 0 to 1. Then using sigmoid, how are we going to predict the output is true or false, 1 or 0? A simple idea is that we're using a threshold value like 0 0.5. So our prediction is greater than 0 0.5, we assume that output is 1. Otherwise, we predict 0. For that. Very simple. In summary, we can show that the model now using a sigmoid, this is our sigmoid, and then we just basically wrap our linear model, this is our linear model, wrap with this sigmoid function, and that's it. How about the loss function? In our previous model, we just use a simple mean square error for our loss. But however, in our new model, because we introduced sigmoid, the previous loss does not work very well. So we need to introduce new loss called cross entropy loss. It looks a little bit complicated, but there is a very interesting theory behind of it. But however, in our lecture, we're just going to use uh, four cases to see how this loss function works for our model. Basic idea of the loss is that if our prediction is correct, the loss value will be small. When our prediction is wrong, our loss value is going to be really big so that we can finalize our model. So these four cases, we just plug these numbers in our loss function here and then see what kind of value we're going to get. So consider this first case. y is 1, real value is 1, but our prediction y hat is 0 0.2. So in this case, our prediction was wrong. So we expect something loss value will be something high. So we just can plug in these numbers here and then see what the loss value looks like. Y value here is 1. So in this case, we will consider only one case. We don't have to compute this mean. So we can just ignore this for now. This is going to be 1 and this is going to be 0 0.2. Our prediction is 0 0.2. 
and then y when y is 1 1 minus 1 is 0 so, so we can just uh, we can just uh, we don't have to consider this term for now and then what will be the loss value so we can simply compute minus here minus 1 times log 0 0.2 uh, this is our log graph so if you look at the 0 0.2 uh, it's gonna be somewhere here so it's it's gonna be minus 0.7 so minus minus is plus so it's gonna be 0 0.7 so as we expected we get some uh, bigger number here and let's look at the other case when y value true value is 1 our prediction is 0 0.8 so which good prediction so uh, we expected the value our loss value will be something similar so we can compute in the same way minus 1 times log 0.8 equal so 0.8 is around here so if you see it's about minus 0.1 I guess so is minus minus is plus it's gonna be 0.1 approximately then as we expect this value is smaller than the first case let's look at the other case when y real value is 0 and then our prediction is 0 0.1 which is good so we expect the loss is going to be small so we can just plug in this number so in that case our y is 0 so this term we don't have to consider but this term 1 minus 0 becomes 1 so we only consider this term so here is minus 1 times log this is 1 minus y hat so 1 minus 0 0.1 equal what is that? log 0 0.9 so if you look at 0 0.9 so it's really small number here so it's around minus 0 0 0.5 so it's something like like this so it's a small number in the same manner we can compute this one so it's basically minus 1 log 1 minus 0 0.9 which is log 0 0.1 so here if you see here it's gonna be this so it's it's minus minus is plus is gonna be one so which is big number so we show that in our four cases our loss function works very well with our model then how are we gonna implement this our implementation is extremely simple as we just introduced sigmoid in our equation we just need to use this sigmoid which is implemented in the functional that sigmoid so we first we import this functional as an f and then we just call this f the sigmoid so in our class we just create this linear model and then we just wrap our linear output from x with the sigmoid and then we just return this value and that's it and then for the loss previously we just used mse loss but here we just change this loss with a PCE, which is binary cross entropy loss. And then we can just define our criterion using uh, this API called PCE loss. And that's it. So let's look at our entire implementation. So in our data set, it's almost same as previous, but only different thing is that in the Y data, we just used 0 or 1 because it's a logistic regression, which is binary. In our model, it's exactly the same, we just in, we create linear which get one input as x1 input also we produce only one output in this case so it's a one to one and then when you compute this forward we just wrap this linear output with this sigmoid and then for the loss we just use the BC loss and, and then optimizer we also use the same optimizer SGD and this is our training roof and then for the prediction real use what we did is that we just get value 1 and then we pass this value to our model and then we check that output is 0 0.5 then it's going to be true or false based on our prediction so this exactly follows our rhythm so first we just design our model using this class in this case it's linear with a sigmoid and then we define our loss and optimizer like that and then we we run the training cycle and that's it and then let's look at the result as we expect as the epoch goes on our loss function loss value is gonna be 
uh, getting smaller and smaller. And then finally, what we did is that we predict if you study one hour, what is going to be? Are we going to success or not success? It's going to be fail, false. And then if you study seven hours, of course, you will be successful. In this lecture, we just use a sigmoid. Often we call this kind of function as activation functions. And there are other types of activation functions like LELU or 10H and so on. So that you can try other uh, activation functions for your exercise. In our next lecture, we're going to talk about how we can make this logistic regression or neural net with the wide and the deep.